Welcome to PhotoshopDemos.com. This is Aaron, and I want to show you today about creating a three-dimensional Happy Valentine's Day card. And everything I'm going to be doing is just really the raw basics of Photoshop, just so you can get a grasp on creating a three-dimensional, a very, very basic three-dimensional look in Photoshop with some of the tools so that you uh, understand really how to use the essential tools. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, I already have a card that's already set up. You can see I have some elements here like a background. We have the uh, gradients going on in the background, some different things down here, a little bit of a reflection as well as um, the letters and the symbols. So I'll show you how all this stuff is applied um, right now. So let's go ahead and minimize that and start with a brand new document. I'm going to, um, let's go ahead and start with a pretty standard size. This is like the size of a website. I'm going to put this at 250 pixels though and hit OK. Now I'm going to fill this with a solid color. I'm just going to fill it with white for right now. I'm going to just hit Control Delete and let's hop over to our layers menu. So first thing we'll need to do is now that this layer is actually by itself, we create a brand new document with a transparent background. Um, and it's not locked or anything like that. If it is locked, just hold down your Alt key and then double click and it will unlock. Okay. What we're going to do is create a, a brand new layer right above that and I'm going to fill it about halfway and I want to make sure that this is on normal for our rectangular marquee tool. Make sure this is on normal. Select about, let's hide this for a moment, let's make sure about half of this is actually uh, selected. Then I'm going to hit um, Alt delete that fills it with the foreground color and that's fine. Now I'm going to come back over to my layers. And now you can see I have my layer one, which is my full background layer, and then as well as the top layer. This this top layer is going to basically be the sky. So let's go ahead and name it sky. And this is going to be the ground. Eventually we're going to actually combine those layers, but I just want to show you how to get the background layer prepped. So what we'll do is once this layer is, is actually filled in, we can double click it. Once you double click, you'll get this layer styles menu. What we want to do is fill it with a color um, gradient. Okay, so we're going to actually do gradient overlay. I'm going to take that color off and you'll see that by default, this black and white is selected over here. You can see that and the black goes from the bottom to the top. What we actually want to do is reverse that. Okay, so we're going to click on reverse. Okay, you can see that it switches that automatically. And we want to change the color. Let's go ahead and I'm going to click this because by default you should actually have, um, let's see if I do reset, you should have these colors by default. But if you don't, you can always select either reset gradients or you can choose from one of the ones in the list here. Um, I'm going to choose default from the list. And I'm going to click on this. It's going to let me change the gradient. So I'm going to click this little icon here. I get the color option down here. I'm going to choose a nice blue. Something a little bit more sky bluish around there and hit OK. You can see now I have a gradient from blue to white and hit OK. And once again, hit OK. So now you can see we have the sky effect going on here, which is fine. Now let's go ahead and do the ground. So again, this is covering up the sky. So when we do the ground, it'll actually fill the entire thing. But because of the sky, it's covering up. So we're all good to go. So double click on the ground. And we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to do color overlay. I'm sorry, gradient overlay. And we're going to get this grayish effect. And just for um, just a really quick demonstration on, on um, really basic three-dimensional concepts is whenever you're doing a landscape, it's always a good idea to have like a lighter, a slightly lighter color sort of in the distance and a, a much more saturated, brighter color in the foreground because obviously those colors are closer to you. And as they move farther away, they're going to become more dull um, and less saturated. Same thing with the sky. As the sky actually... Um, is closer to the horizon it's going to be lighter and more faded out and as it gets closer to the top of the sky it's going to get more saturated in color that always give you a nice depth of field and you'll have a better sense of three dimensions that way now now that we have the gradient selected from this area we can actually click right on the gradient we don't even have to mess around with these tools if we don't want to we can click right here and we can drag this gradient up and down so I'm going to bring this gradient down just slightly because I don't want it filling up that entire space. I don't want this so black and so dark, just slightly. So now that that's in place, I can go ahead and hit OK on that. 
The reason I'm leaving it gray is because I'm going to add another effect to this. So now I'm going to hit brand new layer, just the, the new layer icon. I'm going to click on both of these. I'm going to right click and actually you can't see that. So let me pop this out for just a moment here. And I'm going to right click on this and you still can't see it. Sorry about that. Just the menu is going right below the video. So it's a little bit tricky to see. Okay, here we go. So right click, you see merge layers, we're going to click on merge layers. So now those layers are merged, that's fine. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm going to redock that, that's fine. And I'm going to come over here, I'm going to right click this. Actually, I'm going to double click it. You can right click either um, blending options, you'll go into the same menu, just so you know that's there. Same th menu, double click, gets you into the layer styles. Or you can right click and go to blending options and you'll basically get into the same area. So um, what we'll do here is, next thing is, same thing, gradient overlay. This time we're going to change the type of gradient. So select, actually click on the gradient, come over to gradients, open up this menu, and then we're going to click on this little, little tiny arrow that's up in the upper right-hand corner. Once you click that, you'll get a list of different gradients. We're going to click on color harmonies and hit OK. Okay, so now you can see we have different color harmonies here. Those ones aren't going to really work for me, so I'm going to click once again. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to use the noise samples. I'm going to hit OK on that. So you can see now I get this nice arrangement of a lot of different colors. Okay, so you can either hit randomize and go through these until you find really the color that you want to use. So you can kind of toggle through here until you find the exact color that's going to work. I'm just going to hit this a few more times so I'll get something I kind of like. Not really seeing anything quite yet. And let's go ahead and go with something a little bit more purple. The purple range. Uh, that's pretty okay. That's pretty good. All right, so that's pretty good. And you, if you want to take out the green, you can do that as well. I'm going to kind of mine some of that out just slightly. So there's not as much green here. Hit OK. And we want to actually change the angle. So we want to change the angle to something like that, as well as change the opacity down just a little bit. I don't want it too over overboard. And then I'm also going to change this to, again, you're not going to see it in the list, but go all the way down to the bottom. There's something called color. When you select color, you'll get this kind of effect. That's totally fine. Another option or another thing that you can take is just leave this on normal if you choose. Bring the uh, opacity down just a little bit. Hit OK. And you'll see that there's some layer effects here. What I particularly like to do is right click on the layer. And you can see you have some different options. Well, those aren't going to be the correct options that you're going to actually want. You have to make sure that these layers down here, even though when you you actually left click them, nothing really happens except this menu pops up. But you don't get that secondary menu. So if you actually right click on those, you'll see a completely different menu, which has some different options here. From here, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. And again, you're not really seeing it. Let me see, again. Let me see if I can pull this up. I'm going to right click this and oh, sorry. So you see the difference? Right click this. We're going to go to create layer. Okay. Now when I create layer, it actually takes that effect and it applies it right above it into this new layer. From there, I can have that layer selected individually as an adjustment layer and then filter and I can do blur and I can do something like Gaussian blur if I like just to kind of blur that effect slightly so it's not so like overpowering. All right. And then from there too, I could continue using these blending layers. I could use the opacity. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility to pop those layer to pop those uh, layer styles out onto their own layers. So now that we have that in place, I can dock this back into place, and I can look at kind of what we have here. This is kind of what I want, so this is fine. Um, now, if you want to soften this out just a little bit, you can do that as well because again. We, we have that layer already set in place. So what I would do is go ahead and merge these two layers together. Um, just again, clicking and then right clicking. And then down at the very, very bottom of that layers menu is the um, ability to, if you right click that, you'll see merge, um, merge visible or flatten image. Okay, so you can just click those and put that back for just a moment. Hide that for just a second here.